The idea of being alone in the universe is infinitesimally small. Our Earth, over a trillion cubic kilometers, is one of eight planets orbiting the Sun, which is thousands of times larger. According to NASA, there are probably thousands of solar systems in the Milky Way, the galaxy we live in. The volume of the Milky Way is approximately 3.3 x 10 carat 52 cubic chem. Our universe is trillions of these galaxies containing their own multiple planets and stars, and to make it even crazier, this is only from information we have found in our OBSE or VABLE universe. Our real universe could be millions, billions, trillions, even quadrillions of times bigger, because it is constantly expanding. If we are alone in this universe, then life is that much more rare. The chances of you being born is one in trillions, and you had probably an insanely lower probability of being born if life on Earth is the only form of life in the universe. Possibly jillions of cubic kilometers in volume. Are we truly alone? In this video, we are going to talk about are we alone in the universe. Before we start the video, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Let's start the video. The universe's eerie silence has its own name, the Fermi Paradox. Physicist Enrico Fermi famously posed the question, where is everybody? Even at slow travel speeds, the universe's billions of years of existence allow plenty of time for intelligent technological life forms to traverse the galaxy. Why then is the cosmos so quiet? Meanwhile, exoplanet discoveries over the past two decades have filled in a few of the terms in the much debated Drake equation. A chain of numbers that might one day tell us how many intelligent civilizations we can expect to find. Most of its terms remain blank, the fraction of planets with life with intelligent life with detectable technology, but the equation itself suggests we might one day arrive at an answer. It feels at least a little more hopeful than Fermi's silence. At a recent event about the latest science of exoplanets, former NASA Kepler mission astrophysicist Natalie Batalha redefined what it means to look into the night sky. Rather than seeing solitary stars peppered in space, she said, she now thinks of each point of light as its own solar system of orbiting planets. Astronomers estimate that there are some 100 billion to 200 billion galaxies in the universe, averaging 100 million stars apiece. The number of exoplanets out there is mind-boggling, each a potential cradle for life. Given the math, it seems impossible that we humans would be only living things in the cosmos. The variety of climates and conditions on these faraway bodies would be staggering. Even our own sister planet Venus is drastically different from Earth and demonstrates the difference 40 million miles can make a cosmic stone's throw. Researchers are using such insights to intuit the conditions of planetary bodies light years away and are even looking for moons around exoplanets, which may have suitable conditions for life. To seek out new worlds, technology is advancing quickly. Boosted by the James Webb Space Telescope, launched at the end of 2021, the search for alien life over the next decade now has real depth. Next-gen enormous rockets coming soon promise space missions that can go farther and deploy more powerful telescopes. Privately funded scopes and revolutionary observational techniques using our own sun as a gravitational lens portend major advances in the near future. Perhaps no other field of research has such a hold on the imagination. Recently spotted interstellar rocks and meteors spur debate over their origins, as did a mysterious radio signal detected from the star Proxima Centauri, a mere four light years away from Earth. If we do ever have convincing evidence that we've discovered extraterrestrial life, what is the best way to communicate that news to humanity? Looking for life off Earth prompts interesting philosophical questions. If we use the chemistry of life's beginning on our own planet as a rubric, it might dictate or limit how we investigate life elsewhere. The universe may be teeming with unexpected chemical life forms that look very different from us. And then there's a matter of chance. As astrophysicist John Gribben writes, a serendipitous chain of events had to occur, from the timing of our solar system's formation to our planet's distance from the sun, for organisms to spring up on Earth. It may well be that such conditions are actually rare. And even if alien civilizations are abundant, the universe is immense, beyond the scope of the human mind certainly, and our cosmic backyards keep us far apart. Legendary astronomer and science educator Carl Sagan was a firm believer that the cosmos is full of intelligent beings. He even more vehemently valued scientific reason and evidence, and was known to say that extraordinary claims, even if they support your most wished for dreams, require extraordinary evidence. Given his brand of skepticism, one would hope that he would be pleased about the latest tools we've built to determine if we are indeed alone. In the 1997 film Contact, based on the 1985 science fiction novel written by Sagan about the discovery of an extraterrestrial radio signal, the main character, astronomer Ellie Arroway, says, The universe is a pretty big place, so if it's just us, it seems like an awful waste of space. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoy this video. 
If you do, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates. See you in the next video.